Greetings, volunteers. Doc Brown here. We all recognize a Hollywood blockbuster when we see it. Non-stop action and state-of-the-art special effects. I just can't believe that they could do that. Because it really feels like you're really flying. The Back to the Future ride at Universal Studios Hollywood runs less than five minutes, but it puts the motion in motion pictures. Welcome to the experience known as Movie Rides, a fast-growing cinematic medium that lets an audience feel as though it's actually living the movie. Coming up, we'll go behind the scenes to meet Doug Trumbull, and other effects pioneers who are developing the hardware and imagination needed to create thrilling movie rides. Whoa! Welcome to a very close-up view of Saturn! And we'll find out why movie rides are the new testing ground for Hollywood's special effects on Movie Magic. Spectacular effects, digital sound, giant screens and motion simulators are combined to make movie rides the hottest tickets from Hollywood. Movie rides trick our senses into experiencing flat-out acceleration, zero-gravity freefalls, and high-impact crashes much more convincingly than conventional cinema. You're going down, all of a sudden, just wham, it brings you back up, it's great. I feel like you're in the movie. You're in a person in the movie. <laughs> the enthusiastic response to movie rides has made Hollywood take notice, but only a select few possess the know-how to produce these technological thrill rides. That's where you want to be fighting for control. <laughs> right in here. Look Landmark out, look out, look out. Entertainment Group CEO Gary Goddard is one of the select few. He has designed and produced such theme park attractions as Universal's Confrontation. Tokyo's Discovery Theater and Time Machine of Dreams. Today, Landmark is embarking on another challenge, a futuristic movie ride for the Samsung Corporation. Star Quest Adventure will debut at the World Expo in Taejeon, Korea. We came up with this uh, concept that we call Star Quest, you know, man's quest to the stars and, uh, and how our being and who we are and how we've come forward is all tied to the stars as well, from the first caveman that you know, first looked up at the stars and wondered what they were um, to us today, moving into the stars. On the drawing board for Star Quest Adventure is a four and a half minute film that combines models and miniatures, live action photography, and computer generated imagery. The ride takes viewers through deep space, past the rings of Saturn, through a black hole back into prehistoric time and under the Earth's ocean. The finished movie will be projected onto a huge custom built screen and use a motion simulation base seating up to 60 people. Unlike a conventional movie theater which uses a flat screen, Star Quest Adventure uses a domed screen. The advantage of using a domed screen is that the image virtually surrounds the audience. For Keith Melton, charged by Landmark with coordinating all the diverse components of this movie ride, the single biggest technical dilemma is the concave film image, which is key to the success of this project thing that's exciting about it is it, it essentially covers your peripheral vision. So imagine yourself in a planetarium with your nose inside the perimeter of the planetarium so that it encapsulates your entire vision. So you feel like you are a part of this movie. And not only are you a part of the movie, but the seats are moving in sync to the images that you are viewing. So it's a, it's a real uh, sensory experience. The filmmakers will achieve the dome-shaped image by shooting with a special fisheye lens. This is a fisheye lens, sees about 160 degrees field of view. And if you shoot something with, like, say, vertical lines, they're curved on a piece of film. And that's what's required when you project it into a dome, which is also curved, so that when you look at it, it looks correct. 
We, want, we don't want to feature it, so we're coming Hoyt this Yeatman way, and directs the production on. team at DreamQuest Images, which has been hired by Landmark and Samsung to produce the models and live-action photography for the film. DreamQuest is responsible for Academy Award-winning special effects in Total Recall and The Abyss. In this scene, DreamQuest built 24-inch models, which they shot with computer-controlled cameras, to create a convoy of submarines moving silently through the sea. See it, Cap 3? Yeah, Roger, I got it. All right, just continue forward along the hall. You want me to get shots of everything, yes? Roger that. Document as much as you can, but please keep moving. Copy that. When Hoyt began work on StarQuest Adventure, he first had to calculate where to place the action so that it would appear directly in front of the movie ride audience. In a normal movie, the center would be more toward the center of the frame, something about like this. And in an omni or dome uh, format, it's down very low in frame. And the reason that is is because two-thirds of the frame above you is literally over your top and to the side. Landmark designed elaborate drawings called storyboards, which established the overall look for StarQuest Adventure. Next, Hoyt and his team make a rough approximation of the movie ride, called an animatic. Shot on video with a special fisheye lens, scaled mock-ups of spaceships and key sets give filmmakers an idea of what works and what doesn't on the domed screen. It's like a little kid playing with paper and tin foil and cardboard cutouts. We essentially do the whole ride with these simple materials with a camera. We take the lens that we intend to use, pop it on a video camera, have about two weeks to play, driving the camera through these little rocks and valleys that we make, taking cutouts of spaceships flying around, and we do the entire ride in this fashion. The video animatic is transferred to film and tested in a temporary simulation theater, which Landmark constructed especially for the StarQuest project in a nearby warehouse. The test dome is extremely important because when we're shooting on the stage, we want to be able to get feedback. So once we shot something, we could immediately go down to the dome, put it up on the projector, look at it, and see whether or not we enjoyed it or we liked it, and see what we also could do to make it better. As principal photography progresses, large format 70 millimeter footage will be edited into the animatic in place of the video test footage. In this way, the animatic will slowly evolve into the actual movie ride. Every new foot of film will be screened daily to ensure that the images will be seen correctly on the domed screen being built 6,000 miles away in Korea. As the StarQuest storyline is refined with the animatic, David Goldberg and his team in the DreamQuest model shop meticulously handcraft vehicles, miniature buildings, and 1,000 square feet of lunar landscape. For these model makers, the fisheye lens poses unique problems. The lens tends to distort the pieces, so we have to watch out that we don't have too many straight lines because they tend to be distorted on the, on the screen. At every step of the complex creative process, this project presents rarely encountered challenges. That's the excitement and frustration of producing movie rides. Okay, pilot, I've set the coordinates for our first twister jump. Follow me. The first movie rides were actually military flight simulators with self-contained hydraulic systems. They were originally developed to give pilots crucial combat training. The frame is right there at my fingertips. The lens is seeing right out. Douglas Trumbull was the first Hollywood filmmaker to explore the possibilities of combining motion simulators with motion pictures. Trumbull initially gained recognition for highly respected special effects in 2001 A Space Odyssey. Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and Blade Runner. In 1976, he founded ShowScan and began producing film experiences that were the predecessors to movie rides. Eight years later, Trumbull created the first public movie ride. Tour of the Universe was produced by interactive simulation for the CN Tower in Toronto, Canada. It took audiences on a nine-minute journey to Jupiter and back. No one had ever done that configuration in a flight simulator, a fixed screen, a fixed projector, but moving cars. And we immediately found out you had to start shifting the horizon and doing all kinds of weird camera moves in order to fool the audience's sensory mechanisms. 
in a way that's totally different from flight simulation. Different because movie rides took viewers on a much more dramatic ride with believable movements, twists, and turns. Special effects artists worked hand in hand with simulator programmers to give audiences highly synchronized and carefully orchestrated entertainment. Launch commencing in three, two, one. I have a few things to show you. Here, at the Institute for Future Technology, we made some of the most amazing technological advances the world has ever seen. For Universal's Back to the Future movie ride, Douglas Trumbull continued to advance the ride film experience, incorporating computer-controlled DeLoreans, 11 channels of sound, and a revolutionary 80-foot domed screen, Trumbull's effects team is able to take audiences on an amazing chase through time. You are inside the movie, you are one of the players in the movie, you feel it, you smell it, you sense it, and those characters on the screen are no longer chasing each other, talking to each other, killing each other. They're killing you, or talking to you, or chasing you. And it's a whole new dramatic relationship. Today, the makers of StarQuest Adventure are attempting to take movie ride technology one step further, incorporating live action photography with more computer graphic imagery. As production designer, John Ferret interprets Landmark's design for the camera. You can do storyboards all day long and drawings and paintings, and yet until you finally shoot something or uh, paint something and then project that within the dome, you really have no idea what's, what it's going to look like, where the horizon line is going to be. To help them determine the correct horizon line, the place where audiences will see images most comfortably, the filmmakers used a special template that fit over a regular television monitor. This format here allows us to see where images go on the dome. In other words, we can tell what's in the center or the top or the sides. It just helps us plan the shot from a compositional standpoint. For DreamQuest line producer Dennis Hoffman, compensating for the domed screen and fisheye lens is a constant challenge. That fisheye lens uh, produces the problem of basically showing the world through the camera. We have a 160-degree field of view. What ends up then happening is you have no place to put lights, because if your camera sees everything, it's going to see the lights. To help mask the lights, filmmakers devised a special flap that concealed lights from the camera lens. Okay, camera's moving. Everybody watch your backs. This is a high-speed, turbulent ride. No pregnant mothers. A computer controls the camera to execute precise, pre-programmed moves. This motion control system allows filmmakers to match other elements being created for the movie by computer-generated imagery. The great thing about motion control is that it's, uh, it's information that you can give to both the computer graphics people and the people creating the miniatures. And they have the same information to create the image so that later, when they take these two images, they put them together and they match seamlessly. Academy Award-winning Metrolite Studios tackles the computer effects. Metrolite's work in Total Recall and numerous commercials established its reputation as a leader in the highly sophisticated world of computer-generated imagery, or CGI. With advanced hardware systems such as high-tech silicon graphic computers, Metrolite is attempting to create images that are impractical or even impossible to shoot on film can shoot something live, you should. It's probably going to be more effective, it's going to be um, less expensive and take less time. Uh, but so many things uh, are not possible in reality. They have lots of limitations that we have to deal with in real life that we don't have to deal with in the computer. Creating a CGI scene of the StarQuest spaceship flying through an ocean of dolphins and whales is a three-step process. The images start out as wire frames, which allow artists to establish basic shapes and movement. Next is the modeling stage, a painstaking process where the shapes get color, texture, and lighting. Finally, the dolphins and whales are animated, given the subtle movements that make them appear lifelike. The 7,000 individual frames of CGI film were the responsibility of Metrolite creative director John Townley. Just one frame in certain instances would take up to 18 hours to render. It's a pretty dramatic number when you think in terms of that frame going by you in a 30th of a second. One of the challenges of the job was how long it actually took to create pictures of this high level of resolution and uh, technical achievement. 
Complex technical problems arose in the prehistoric dinosaur scene. Artists needed a highly sophisticated math solution to get the creature to chew leaves correctly. We're combining two kinds of software. The stuff that's closest to his mouth has to be married to what his mouth is doing. So that's interpolating geometry. We've got to actually interpolating backwards. It needs to actually, when he bites down, it needs to sort of kick up. We've got to doing the opposite. During every step of StarQuest adventure, each shot is tested and retested on the domed screen. The producers work hard to assure that the scene where the spaceship falls through a black hole is perfectly believable. We're going into that black hole. Yeah. It starts to, we're resisting, right? Yes. Do we actually back up first before we, we resist? We have a thing where we go back. This is the, uh, the first version you ever saw. The new ones that we have, which we'll be cutting in, goes over the edge. You start going like this. He's backing up. We start losing it, start going around the corner. Okay. More stuff what, comes in. Great. What I want to feel is, when he says reverse thrusters, I want to feel it starting to go out before. So yeah. we're doing down. And he reverse thrusters full. We go, right. we start to pull out. And then it starts, you know, then it, then it starts shaking. We're not right. making it. We're not making anything. Okay. And then we go, right? Okay. Gravitational pull is too strong. Commander, we're going in. The motion base on which the viewers are seated is as important to this movie ride as the images on the screen. The computerized motion base is programmed by Trey Stokes, who matches it with the screen action. We take this base and program movements into the base based on what the film is. Um, so we do just try and match as much as we can the dives and turns and twists and accidents that happen. We bump into a lot of stuff in this particular ride. The hydraulic platform tilts forward, backward, and side to side. It simulates high-speed travel. In fact, the rumbling moves are equivalent to an 8.0 earthquake. Trey first gets the moves he wants by hand. Then he transfers those moves to computerized controls. Manually, I couldn't say that move should be two frames sooner. On the graph, I can do that. I can take the move that I have that feels right, but is just not quite in the right place, and just shift it. Our concern is if we put too much motion on the film, it's going to create a very sick audience. So we're going to pull back, if you will, on the motion on the screen and supplement it with the motion base. Back and forth testing continues as the creative team solves problems and makes changes. The other great thing that we can add which is not so much side to side, is the turbulence, is you know, one of these things. As each scene is shot and refined, the film is edited into the animatic and housed in this large, elaborate, dust-free case called a loop cabinet. The loop cabinet allows movie makers to view their work in progress over and over again without rewinding and possibly damaging the film. This is a, a color move test of the moon base, you know, coming out of the launch tube and flying around. It, it's really dealing with just the key light issues. It doesn't have any of the architectural lights that need to be done, but it gives us a good idea of, you know, the problems that were involved with masking the lens and things. Integrating the live-action photography with the computer-generated images is the final process to complete this movie ride. This is accomplished using a process called electronic pin blocking. First, model moves are mapped with wireframe computer graphics. The model is then shot against a blue screen, a background that can easily be separated from the model. Finally, these pictures of the model are transferred to computer, giving the illusion that the spaceship is flying through the computer-generated scene. Look out! After a year of intense teamwork, Star Quest Adventure is ready for its debut. Landmark specially constructed this pavilion at the Korean World Expo in Taejeon for the four-and-a-half-minute film. Now it will undergo its first test before a live audience. This spine-tingling, nerve-shattering spin through time and space has to be seen and felt to be believed. As movie ride technology continues to advance, several companies are working on the cutting edge of this exciting medium. Thank you, Commander. Welcome home, everyone.
ShowScan, one of the first to explore the possibilities of movie rides, used computers to create this hair-raising roller coaster ride through an abandoned mine shaft. The Days of Thunder movie ride was produced by iWorks Entertainment. Viewers experienced the explosive world of NASCAR racing with speeds up to 200 miles per hour. Thanks to brilliant special effects technicians with unlimited imaginations, you may soon find yourself part of your favorite action movie. Many Hollywood filmmakers see movie rides as the next frontier for motion pictures. I had a wonderful experience with Steven Spielberg, and we were at Universal looking at the Back to the Future ride. He said to me, Doug, you know, I used to think you were completely out of your mind. And now that I look at this, I think you were right. I think technology is going to be pushing even further forward in ride films. The use of 3D, the domes that can essentially cover your whole field of view. A total environmental experience where maybe you smell, you feel, uh, you interact. So buckle your seatbelts. The curtain is about to go up on the latest blockbuster from Hollywood. You can bet special effects wizards will break the bounds of technology to create faster, wilder, and ever more believable movie magic.